fixed deposits. It's been one of the preferred investment options across generations. But there may be a number of other options in the debt space which are relatively safe and give higher returns. Alex Matthew is here to tell us more about it. Alex, good morning. And you know, I'm so looking forward to hearing this because yesterday on the way back home, I had a chat with a friend uh, who's got large dollops of money in fixed deposit. Mm. And her question to me was, and it caught me by surprise, but I realized that there's so much of mis disbelief out there. Her question to me was, I do not want to go into debt mutual funds because they don't give me fixed returns. Fixed deposit gives me fixed returns yes. and therefore I want to be safe. People don't know of the alternatives. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I think that's uh, critical to know uh, before you make any decisions. Uh, Neeraj, first of all, Happy New Year happy to you. Happy New Year to Alex. And, and indeed to all of the viewers of Bloomberg Quint. I think it's important to talk about fixed deposits because growing up, I think uh, the one product that you definitely heard about that your father spoke about or your mom spoke about was fixed deposits. But, but we're in 2020 now. Uh, and the reason we're talking about alternatives to fixed deposits now, Neeraj, is because fixed deposits yield you much less than they did at the start of 2019. Because over the course of 2019, you've had rate cuts to the extent of 135 basis points. So yesterday when I looked at the rates offered by State Bank of India, you have fixed deposits more than one year offering only 6.25%. Now, some people may look at that rate and say, hey, okay, that's fine, because I know that my money is safe. But you have to also account for the tax element. Now, what happens in fixed deposits is that the entire return that you get on your fixed deposit is taxed at the marginal slab rate. So what that essentially means is that if you're in the 30% bracket, the return that you earn from your fixed deposit goes and sits above your salary or income for the year and that entire return gets taxed at that 30% rate. So effectively, if you've got 6.25, just for the sake of calculation, 6.25 rupees on a 100 rupee fixed deposit, a third of that is gone, okay? Now, a few people may still say that's fine because your money is safe, but you have to account for inflation, right? So inflation is hovering around 4% or thereabouts. So effectively, your money is all gone. You, you have 100 rupees now, you will have 100 rupees accounted for inflation at the end of the year. So that's not very efficient, which yeah. is why we're talking about the alternative. So let's well, get let, down let, to let's, that. Let's face it, inflation may be 4% headline, yeah. but the household inflation is much higher. Absolutely, absolutely. And the objective of your, your investments is to safeguard against inflation. True. Right, so let's talk about the alternatives. The first one and the first couple uh, are essentially similar in nature to the taxation of fixed deposits, but they give you higher returns. So the first one, there are deposit-taking NBFCs like mm -hmm. Bajaj Finance. Mm -hmm. um, and, and effectively, they give you a higher rate of return, so you make that spread, okay. right? So I checked uh, the deposit that was offered on Bajaj Finance. Uh, Three-year-plus uh, deposits are giving you as much as 8.1%. So there's a significant increase in the amount of interest that you earn. Of course, when you're talking about a safety of uh, the deposit, uh, they're offering you because there's a higher risk involved, but still when you're talking about a AAA rated uh, company like a Bajaj Finance, relatively lower risk than other stuff out there. So the second one we've spoken about a lot, Neeraj, in the recent past. You've done shows on it, you've done conversations at the Bharat Bond ETF, mm -hmm. it was just launched. Uh, a lot of uh, the experts that I've spoken to, I'm sure you will agree, uh, have said that you should Consider subscribing to this and hold to maturity okay. uh, because of the index. Hold to maturity means that I buy and I hold it for the entire period of the bond. Yeah. Is it? So, so between now and March, hmm. if you subscribe to the issue, you will get four indexation benefits in that for, for the three-year bond uh, and 11 indexation benefits for the 10-year bond. Now, in case you don't know what that means, it's very simple. Uh, and this is where it's different from your fixed deposit. What happens is that your indexation allows your return to be adjusted for inflation and that gets taxed at LTCG. So long-term capital gains gets, mm. uh, uh, gets uh, levied on your returns minus your inflation over a period of time. That's okay. effectively it. That makes it beneficial. So which means that uh, the accounting cost of acquisition of this might become higher because of every time I get an indexation benefit. Is that yeah. a simple rule? Is uh, that a simple Very explanation? simply, Neeraj, if you have, if you're buying, say, if you're buying the three-year bond that or the three-year ETF that's uh, culminating in 2023, you get four indexation benefits. So you essentially have inflation for four years. If, even if you take it at 4%, just for calculation's sake, effectively that if it's giving you about 6.5%, 7%, you're only paying tax on that 25 3% incremental okay. 
number, okay. right? And it's lower because it's 20% LTCG, whereas if you're in the 30% bracket, you're paying 30% on the whole amount, right? So, so that's a significant one. Uh, the other one, it doesn't come around very often, but there are publicly issued corporate bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several companies out there that need capital, so they issue uh, bonds that normally go to the big buyers out there, the mutual funds and the banks and all of the insurance companies, but sometimes they issue it publicly. So you can actually subscribe to them. They don't come around very often, but it's a good idea to keep your ear to the ground and find out where they are because they give you a higher rate of return. Now here too, the interest that you get, the entire amount, uh, you're paying uh, based on your slab rate. So in that sense, it's similar to a fixed deposit, but it'll give you higher returns. Mm. The next one is, we've spoken about it, mutual fund debt schemes, and there are several under that category, 12 or so, that uh, come under various uh, aspects. So you have guilt funds, you have corporate bond funds, uh, you know, the much maligned credit risk funds. But within that, you have to understand that you're subject to interest rate risk. Now, very simply, you have to understand that yields and prices in bond markets move in opposite directions. So when you have a situation where the RBI is cutting rates, you have a situation where the prices are going up. So your portfolio is growing, but uh, you're yielding less, right? So if you're buying new, you're getting less. But if you're holding for a while and interest rates come down, you're, you're getting more. But on the other hand, if your interest rates go up, you're losing capital. So that's something that you have to bear in mind. If you want to negate that, there mm. are two options that you should consider. Mm. You can consider run-down uh, schemes and you can consider fixed maturity schemes within debt mutual fund schemes. Again, indexation benefits kick in after three years, which makes it a more uh, efficient option. There's also the public provident fund. Uh, I think most experts will stress that everybody must get a public provident fund. You can buy one for your kid as well. Uh, it's something that has a maturity of 15 years. And as of now, it's yielding as much as 7.9%. You can invest up to 1.5 lakh rupees every year. And that entire amount, if you're not making any other savings under ATC, is deductible from your taxable income. And what's more, the returns that you get at the end of 15 years are completely tax-free. So that's sure. a really beneficial thing. Then you also have RBI bonds, which are less heard of. I must admit that I hadn't heard of it before I spoke to a financial planner yesterday. He said that you can buy it from your bank's website uh, and it gives you 7.75%, which is more than a fixed deposit anyway. But you still get taxed at your slab rate. So several options out there. In fact, there may be more, but these I think. And one very important point, Neeraj, is where if you're investing in equities and you keep stressing this, you must diversify. You can do that with your debt investments as well. You can keep a core amount in your fixed deposits, sure. but you can also diversify. Okay, just very quick follow-up, yeah. Alex. Yeah. Aside of, uh, uh, so the Bharat bond ETF would tax you at 20%. All yeah. the other options will tax you at 30%, but they give you a higher rate of return compared to the fixed deposit, right? No, so long-term capital gains tax is 20%. Hmm. So on your debt mutual funds, you get indexation benefits and you get long-term capital gains. Okay. Even your corporate bond, if you're holding, if the value, so 100 rupees, if the value, like I said, the price and yield, yeah. so if you sell before maturity, and if that 100 has gone to 102, then you're paying long-term capital gains on, on two on rupees. Okay. But on the interest component, you're paying based on your slab rate. 